March 2023. 40k still upholds the illusion of being a functional competitive game and fans are only the normal amount of mad. World Leaders just got a new codex that people are convinced they'll play with more than once. Warhammer is still complicated and life is simple. Terminator span is on the rise. People all across the world are ungabunging their way to the midfield objective and staying there for three hours while their opponent plays solitaire and they take a nap. A problem only possible in a world full of free war gear. But we all know they'll probably fix that once 10th edition comes out in two or so years. Driven by forces beyond my means of comprehension, I am in the middle of paying 25 Deathwing Terminators to a company of 20 I already own, simply to show God that I can. I quickly cobbled together a patchwork army from eBay rescues, 3D printed bids, and the big bucket of emergency space brains a friend from high school gave me. You might be saying to yourself, Tyler, you clearly made this army because you thought you could dunk your way through grinding local RTTs for a few months into enough store credit to put a down payment on a house, or at least cover 5 to 15 percent of the cost of this army. Store credit that would probably, in reality, mostly be spent on bottled water, as is tradition. And you might be right, but also that went away within the first day or two of building this army, and it quickly became mostly about printing as many uh, purity seals as I possibly could. I played exactly one RTT with this army, mostly unpainted still at that point. I mean, it's mostly unpainted now still, but it was even more mostly unpainted then. I went undefeated to no one's great surprise or celebration, and immediately back back to the purity seal factory farm we went. I think it is physically impossible for me to care about any army that's on orcs for more than three months, but this one was a pretty good effort. I feel like I'll come back to it someday. I think I always kind of knew from the beginning that uh, it was never going to last. Like, there's no way 45 Terminators are going to be good, maybe not even legal for that long, but I kept on painting them anyways. I, I'm really not f fully sure why. I think I was hoping this video would turn into some kind of like uplifting message of, oh yeah, models can just be for fun sometimes. You don't need to just think of tournaments in order to have fun with the hobby, Tyler. Like It can be for just you. But I don't think that's what happened here. I feel like I ended up in some kind of hypnotic trance of just making Terminators. One day suddenly snapped out of it, and then now they've sat on the shelf for like two months. The only real thing akin to that I can honestly say I took away from this experience is that miniatures have a weird psychic hold over me emotionally, but I don't really understand it. I don't get where it comes from. I mean, it's rooted in some like early childhood thing, surely. I've played this game since I was like 10, but I don't really get it. I don't know why I wanted to spend that much time building 45 Terminators as an adult man without any real plans for them. It just it just kind of happened. These things happen. Sometimes you just wake up and there's 45 more Terminators than there used to be and you can't do anything about that. That's just the will of the universe speaking through you. Playing Warhammer has made me really understand primitive idol worship. Like it's kind of the same thing. There's like these little guys you really, really like. A fun fact I feel like a lot of people don't know is that the terracotta soldiers of Kinshi Han were like originally all painted. Kind of an old hammer called too. I saw like a reproduction of one six years ago at a museum and it looked like it was just painted with like 80s heavy metal paints. Just like that super saturated look. Mostly primary colors. I mean they look exactly like Warhammer fantasy models when you see a bunch of them all together ranked up. I think there's something about Warhammer that speaks to us on like a really deep level that we don't understand and don't talk about that much. Something about just like little guys is really captivating. Like things in miniature scale. I mean it applies to like model trains and stuff too. I think it's all tickling like the same part of of your brain and whether you become like a train guy or a warhammer guy is just like sort of what you want to take out of the experience i think for me a big part of the appeal is that they are like your army that you are building and slowly amassing into this like massive force like just looking at them all on the shelf feels powerful there's so many models that i have that i don't really even play with but i like that i have them because it adds to like the feel of the army and i like imagine them all like hanging out together in a little battlefield and i feel like whatever makes us play warhammer is probably not that much different than whatever led to the terracotta soldiers being built. Little Wars is the first widely published miniature game. Uh, it's by H.G. Wells, the science fiction writer, and it came out in 1913. Uh, the copy that I have has this really funny forward by Isaac Asimov, where uh, he spends the vast majority of it just talking about how much he hates war and uh, not much else. And then in the last like two sentences, he's like, I guess maybe long term people playing this game makes them want to do less war and will just like basically be used to suppress mankind's primal urges to commit actual war and violence and instead just uh, get their kicks by doing simulated warfare through little plastic guys instead. And according to my therapist, that's uh, still maybe why some people uh, play miniature war games today in like tournaments so that they can have some kind of outlet for uh, aggression and control that they feel uncomfortable expressing in their personal lives because they're avoiding and hate conflict. But when you spend every Saturday doing fake conflict with orcs for 10 hours, it's okay. That's healthy. That's where you... Yeah, 
someone, like a patient of theirs, uh, unspecified, feels safe. It's really interesting just like going through Little Wars and seeing how much it resembles modern wargaming and Warhammer. Like it's all the same shit. There's just like little guys and little thick terrain and there's tons of rules. Like this book, it's pretty big, very uh, intricate and specific rules for like different scenarios happening and how to resolve different conflicts. Probably better written than certain unspecified modern war games. Uh, it's just all the same shit. You got your little guys on horses, you got your little soldiers on foot and all the generals and they've got different rules than the normal guys and there's cannons. Uh, the cannons in Little Wars have like pellets that you're supposed to shoot at your opponent's models to knock them over. Uh, a mechanic that I hope comes back to 40k someday. But otherwise is largely the same. Like there's like different characteristics and yeah it's, it's just like terrain and moving guys around and imagining a little battle play out in you and your opponent's head. Uh, if you've made it this far into the video and you're hoping for a Deathwing painting tutorial, sorry we're just gonna talk about pagan idol worship today. In conclusion, I think it's healthy and normal that we all like to pretend to be little war crime officiators on the weekend and I have clinical evidence to back that up. It's fun to participate in arbitrary games of conquest and domination and according to Isaac Asimov, playing Warhammer is literally humanity's only hope. For more objective facts, please like and subscribe to my channel and thanks for coming by.